What's going on guys and welcome back to the channel. I'm Chris and this is 4K Motoring. We are in the close-in stages of our MotoGP trip to Austin, Texas from Raleigh, North Carolina. About two weeks out, just getting everything kind of finalized and put together. We've taken care of a couple things on our 2022 Ducati Multistrada that's going to be taking us there. I want to start filling you guys in on the trip, on my preparation, and let you check out what I got. If not already pretty obvious, got the new sticker on the front tire here. This is the new Michelin Anarchy Road tire. This is the latest from Michelin as a 9010 adventure tire made for adventure bikes. Basically, this features the same 2CT Plus compound that the Road 6 did that I was riding on. This tire right here. And what that basically means is the center section of the tire is in a harder rubber but that harder rubber also continues around to the sidewall as you can kind of see a little edge on the sidewall where it changes colors and ch changes texture a little bit and the sidewall is that harder rubber as well so that gives the tire a little bit more stability especially leaned over and also gives you that long lasting tread life in the center while allowing a softer rubber to be placed on top in the sidewall section so when you lean over you have a little bit more grip which I think is a really good combination. I th overall, I was really impressed with it. When I had my Scorpion Trail 2 tires, both on my last Multistrada and this one, I noticed the sidewall was a little bit softer and that would allow the tread blocks to kind of twist, which made the wear pattern a little bit irregular. With the Road 6, I was pretty happy with them overall. I have just over 16,000 miles on this bike now, so got about 8,000 or so miles on the tires. The rear tires were down to about 230 seconds in the center and still had about 630 seconds at the widest part on the sidewall. So they had some life left, but I don't think they would have survived our 4,000 mile trip to Texas and back. So it was time for a new one. Thank you everybody that responded to the poll I had on my channel asking for tire suggestions. I was really debating between just replacing a Road 6 rear since this front definitely has a little bit of life left in it still. I'm keeping that as a spare. The new Anarchy Road Tire from Michelin which shares a lot of the same components as the Road 6, just in a more aggressive tread layout. Or the new Pirelli Scorpion Trail 3 tire, the latest and greatest from Pirelli. If we remember, the original Scorpion Trail tire was developed in partnership with Ducati for their, I believe, 2015 Multistrada. It may have been a little bit before then, but for the Multistrada platform. There was not an update for the V4 when it came out, but their latest version is now out. I was unable to find one that I could get before my trip, so that kind of eliminated that, even though you guys wanted to see it. The nearest equivalent is this Michelin Anarchy Road that shares, it's basically Michelin's version of the Scorpion Trail tire from Pirelli. It brings that 9010 component to it, this mostly road biased tire, good for water evacuation, good for on-road, with still some light off-roading ability. I will mention at my new assignment at work where we're riding BMW 1200 RTs with the Road 6 tires. We did some pretty impressive off-roading with those bikes that are in no way meant to go off-road with tires that are definitely not meant to go off-road. And truly they impress me what they're really capable of. I imagine if these things are even any better than the Road 6 as these are meant to be a little bit more off-road oriented, especially as I see these more aggressive sidewall sipes and the little bit wider void space. I imagine these things are actually going to be very capable for most mild off-roading on this bike. So one issue that I kind of figured out that I had with my set of Road 6 is when I put them on, I felt like the bike constantly wanted to pull a little bit to the left. And that was with your hands off the handlebar just coasting, it would want to pull a little bit to the left. Not super aggressively. It wasn't anything that was unstable while you're riding. If you had a hand on the handlebar, it required almost no effort at all to counteract. Just cruising, if you took your hands off the handlebar, the bike would dip over to the left ever so slightly, and that kind of bothered me. What I found was the little adjustment marks on the swing arm here on both sides to kind of align the axle to keep both sides in alignment with each other. While they're great to have, what I noticed was this actual hub here, the actual slider that this has for the axle with the mark on it, 
Apparently on the bolt side, it twists a little bit. When it twists, it moves where that mark is and changes your position. So as I found out through trial and error on this one, if you make sure you get that adjuster piece square, this axle holder right here, if you make sure that is square when you take your measurement, get everything set, even if you torque down this bolt and this, the whole adjuster piece kind of tilts a little bit clockwise in the little bit of tolerance it has, moving that mark, you're still aligned properly. I'll leave the video linked up above where I actually did the chain adjustment and tire replacement on this bike last. Just in case you guys need the step-by-step, -step, just keep that in mind when you do align the tire. Overall tire wear on the Road 6 ended up to be pretty similar with the Scorpion Trail 2s that I had. This bike now has the full Acura exhaust, the up map, and a little bit more experience in riding it. So it was ridden a little bit more aggressively for this set of tires. And overall, I got about the same life with them. So there wasn't really a big difference between the Road 6 and the Scorpion Trail 2s. I'm imagining since we're sharing the same 2CT Plus compounds with the Anarchy Road, we're probably gonna see pretty similar overall life from those. I wouldn't imagine much different. If you guys haven't seen my recent video, I did get a phone call a day or two ago from Ducati North America about this bike, my 2022 Multistrada. And what they told me is that there's a software update available, which is shocking because I was told every three to six months there's always a software update available that we never get a phone call from, which concerned me a little bit. When I asked a few more questions, what they told me is that apparently there's some engine reliability issues with these bikes, with the V4 Multistradas, with the quick shifter that the software update aims to fix. He didn't go into detail on exactly what reliability issues it had and how the quick shifter was involved. It concerns me a little bit as we're now approaching almost 17,000 miles with this bike. What I was told is that I can keep riding it until I get that software update, but to avoid sporty riding, whatever that means, I'm guessing that means high RPMs with the quick shifter, which for at least 16,000 of the almost 17,000 miles, that's how this bike has been ridden. So I'm a little bit concerned when we talk about longevity, what damage is already done to this that I hope to get sorted out. If you guys haven't already gotten this update, it is the end of March 2024. Make sure you do that. Apparently that's a pretty big deal that they're willing to call people about this update. So make sure you guys get to the dealership. It is free and get it done. So far on the couple trips we've made it on this 2022 Multistrada, it has been fantastic. The only thing I think I was missing at this point, especially now that I have these crash bars, were extra lights and something I noticed with this version of the Multistrada this generation particularly, it has very much projector style lights, which create a very hard edge on top of the lighting beam, which is great for not blinding people, but as soon as you start getting into hills or leaning into curves, it gets dark really fast. And that's something that did bother me a little bit, especially at nighttime in the mountains last year when we went, that was kind of a problem. These were from Amazon and actually very inexpensive, less than $100. And I'm really impressed. They're LED lights and they put out a very comparable brightness to the factory low beams on this bike. But the beam is, while still a projector, not as sharp at all. It's kind of a very soft edge. So really, if you're leaning in corners or trying to get just a larger area illuminated, these are doing a fantastic job. They also are very visible, especially in the daytime. So having something that is very wide, low on the bike, in addition to the top headlights and having additional beam output has made this a whole lot better at night. I am very happy now with the lighting output of this bike. And I don't get many people flashing their high beams at me at all, so I don't think they're blinding in any way. I think they just make this bike more visible and provide a lot more usable light. So I would highly recommend these things. I'll leave a link in the description below. Again, less than $100. They come with a full wiring harness, relays, and a switch this switch right here, which is pretty cheap, but it does mount to a bolt hole pretty easily, it comes with that bracket, and it, it remains in one position or the other, which I like a lot. Wired the relay to an ignition-based power source, that way it only comes on when the bike comes on, and it works great. I do have some friends with clear water lights and the Denali lights that are wired into the bike itself that can vary brightness based on your high beam, low beams, do turn signal switchback stuff. That's all cool, but for the price of these things and for how just foolproof they are, I am very happy with them. The only other big issue I had, and to say big is a little bit of an overstatement, one of the only other issues that I kind of chronically had that I wished I had a solution for 
was some sort of way to stretch out a little bit when riding. This is an adventure bike. The seating position is very standard, very uh, kind of neutral. The pegs are right under your hips basically. So it is a pretty comfortable place to be overall. But having the ability to move your legs a little bit, especially on long road trips, is beneficial. In slower speeds, standing up is very easy to do on this bike. I do like the overall handlebar position and the overall ergonomics of this bike. Make it pretty easy to stand up. But when you're doing highway speeds, when you're going 70 plus miles an hour, that's a lot of wind in your face, especially with the way this overall windshield throws it up there. Not super comfortable, especially if you're trying to listen to music or communicate, not great. So what we found was these are from Amazon as well. They were about 80 bucks. And these are some fold down highway pegs that I actually like a lot. They're all metal. They feel aluminum in construction. And the quality is pretty good. They have built-in detents, so they kind of snap down and snap up. I don't think they're ever in danger of falling. They did include some grease to make sure they stay lubricated and not rusty. They have multiple mounting positions. They have kind of an inbuilt pin to hold them in place. A bunch of different bar sizes they fit. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with these. They seem to hold a lot of weight when tight, and with a little bit of Loctite, that was added that wasn't in the instructions. I'm really excited to see how these things do on the road trip. It's gonna be super nice to have something just to kind of stretch my legs out like I did when I had a cruiser and just give me another place to put my feet for long road trips. A product you guys have not seen on the channel yet or one that I've not brought up at least is the Brake Free Light. You guys may have seen this on some other channels. It's kind of an interesting design. It is a wearable brake light, a wireless brake light that mounts to your helmet and it uses no sensors or wires to connect to the bike, just an accelerometer that knows if you start decelerating quickly, whether that's engine braking, whether it's actually braking, whatever you do, it will brighten up a little bit and let people know you're slowing down. With my Multistrada, especially with that quick shifter, I do a lot of engine braking. I'm just downshifting, clicking through the gears more often than I'm actually hitting the friction brakes for a lot of the braking I do on the roadway. Something like this is hugely beneficial for those scenarios. They're on the precipice of their second generation brake free coming out. It will not be out by the time I go on my trip, which is unfortunate, but we ordered a second mount so I can at least move this one that we've been testing over to my helmet to use it on the trip. You guys will get to see it a little bit. The things I like about it are the wireless braking capabilities and the overall visibility. The light patterns, the pulsing patterns, everything it has are fantastic. The problem is the button is really hard to press to change modes and turn it on and off. And the micro USB is becoming kind of a thing of the past for charging. So I'd like to see a bigger battery, more efficient lighting and a USB-C charger, which I hear are coming out later this summer. To give an update on our Cardo Edge, this is our third unit with some battery issues on our first two. So far, this has been fantastic. I've had no issues at all with it. We've been running it now for a couple months since my last video, since I received it, obviously with that skin on there, and it's been working great, no complaints at all. If you guys are interested this weekend only, Cardo is giving 25% off of Cardo Edge products. I believe it's actually most of the product line, but the Edge is included. If you wanna get one, now is the biggest sale I've seen so far, 25% off. I'll leave the code in the description below to get that. If you guys are at all interested, this is the pinnacle of helmet communication at the moment. I haven't found anything better, and it is 25% off right now from Cardo. So with that, we're just about ready for our trip. Obviously, we're gonna keep you guys updated as we actually travel. If anybody's interested in seeing exactly what's involved at Coda, at exactly what the MotoGP celebration brings, consider becoming a member of this channel. For the members only, I'll be posting a lot of content from the track, from the races, and from Circuit of the Americas in general. So if you're interested, consider becoming a member of this channel. Prices are low, only 99 cents a month. Will really help us bring you some of this content. So that's it. If there's anything you think we're missing for this trip or anything we think we're missing on the bike itself, let me know in the description below. If you have questions about any particular accessories that we have, or want me to make a video going through every accessory now at this point explicitly, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, make sure you're subscribed, consider becoming a member, and as always, stay tuned for our next video. Mm -hmm.